Hello, I'm Northwest Coast native artist David Neal, and this is the story of Bookwis and Made to Be Hunter. Early one summer morning, Made to Be Hunter was preparing his canoe for seal hunting. The cedar canoe was beautifully carved. It had been given to him by his father, Wealthy One. He was one of the leading men in the village, and he was an advisor to Rolling Down, who was their chief. In the bow of the canoe, there were two harpoons, seal bladders full of water, and cedar boxes of dried fish, all securely tied down. As soon as Made to Be Hunter departed from the village, the wind picked up, and fog began to roll in from the east. Before long, the fog was so thick that he was unable to keep to a heading. All that he could do was to keep the bow pointed into the waves and wait for the fog to lift. All day, he drifted through dense fog, and at night, clouds blocked the sky so that he was unable to navigate by the stars. When daylight came, the fog lifted, but Made to Be Hunter had no idea where he was or which direction to go. All he could do was to wait. Another night came and went, and Made to Be Hunter was completely lost and was more than a little scared. In the morning, he woke with a start and realized that he had fallen asleep with his paddle in hand. In the distance, he saw the shoreline, and white-tipped waves were breaking on the beach. Land, he shouted, and started to paddle. As he got near the shore, Made to Be Hunter's heart sank when he saw that there were large waves crashing on the beach. This was a dangerous place to come ashore, but he had little choice. He watched the waves and waited for a calm moment between the swells. He got his canoe within 20 meters of the shore, and when he judged the time was right, he paddled with all his strength. As he got near the beach, to his dismay, he saw that it was strewn with rocks and pebbles. Suddenly a big wave picked up at the stern, lifted it high, and flung the canoe forward. It shot up on the rocks and came to an abrupt halt, and Made to Be Hunter was tossed roughly on the beach. He gathered what he could find and carried his provisions up to the tree line. As he was coming back for the last load, Made to Be Hunter saw that a huge wave was rolling towards him. He turned and sprinted back the way he had come with the roar of the approaching wave behind him. As he reached the high water line, he looked back to see the wave reach his canoe, envelop it, and fling it far up the beach where it struck the rocks and split into pieces. As the waves receded, fear gripped him and he realized he was stranded with no idea where he was. The wind continued to blow and Made to Be Hunter was thoroughly wet and cold. He dragged the pieces of his canoe to the forest and arranged them in a crude shelter and stored the remainder of his provisions inside. Once he was out of the weather, he untied the lashing on the cedar box and was pleased to see that the smoked salmon inside was still dry. He realized that he hadn't eaten since leaving his village and he was ravenous, and he started to eat. Before he could finish eating, exhaustion overtook him and he fell into a deep sleep. Made to be a hunter awoke to find that it was evening. Is there anyone in there? Someone called from outside. Hello, Made to be Hunter replied. Who's that? A man's face appeared in the entrance to the hut and looked around. His eyes locked on Made to be Hunter, but his gaze was not quite human. Your canoe is in pieces, said the stranger. What is your name, friend? I am Made to be Hunter, he replied. And who are you? You must be hungry. Come with me and I will feed you, the stranger replied. And he turned and began to walk away. Made to be a Hunter could hardly believe his good luck at having found help so quickly. He scrambled to his feet, grabbed a box of provisions, and ran after the stranger. They had not been walking long when they arrived at a large big house. The stranger indicated that he should come inside and then enter through a small door. Made to be Hunter followed, bumping his head on the low door. Once they were inside, the stranger said, Warm yourself by the fire and food will be brought to you. Then the stranger disappeared into the rear of the house. Made to be Hunter was thinking that the stranger seemed a little odd when he heard a voice whispering behind him. Made to be Hunter, can you hear me? said a voice from the dim recesses of the house. Startled, Made to be Hunter replied, Who is that? I am Calling Tribes, the daughter of Chief Rolling Down, said the voice. My father is an attendant to Chief Rolling Down, Made to be Hunter said in amazement. His daughter disappeared four years ago. I was taken by Bookwist, and I've been a captive here for four years, Calling Tribe replied. I ate their food, and now I can never go home. They are planning the same for you. What do they want of me? Made to be Hunter asked. Listen carefully to what I tell you, Calling Tribe said. Soon they will bring you food, but do not eat it. If you do, then you become like them, a wild thing of the forest. You will be trapped here like me. As she finished speaking, two men entered carrying a large piece of hemlock bark, which had lots of steaming hot roasted salmon. 
They set it down in front of Made to Be Hunter, and without saying a word, they went to stand on the other side of the fire. Made to Be Hunter took some smoked fish from a cedar box and then picked up a piece of the roasted salmon. He pretended to eat it, letting the pieces drop into his lap as he ate his own salmon. Then, making sure that he wasn't being watched, he took the roast salmon and threw it into the fire, where it transformed into rotted wood. After a time, the two men came and took away the remains of the roast salmon. After they were gone, Colin Tribe said from the shadows, Did you eat the food, my friend? No, Made Bee Hunter whispered in reply. I deceived them and I ate my own food. That's good, because anyone who eats their food is changed forever can never go home, Colin Tribe said. This is a place where drowned souls come to spend eternity. Who is the man who brought me here? Made to be Hunter said. He's my husband, and he is the chief of the ghosts, Colin Tribes replied. Once I was like you, but he tricked me. I ate their food, and now I'll be here forever. The food is not my husband's only trick, continued Colin Tribes. He will stare into your eyes, and he will draw you in, and then you will lose your mind and your volition. He will do that by simply staring at me? Made to be Hunter asked skeptically. Don't underestimate his power, Colin Tribes cautioned. You must stare back and don't allow him to overpower you. Be strong with spirit and you can overcome him. I must go now, but I'll come back again. Wait, Made to be Hunter exclaimed, but she was already gone. The fire died down and the house became dim. No one came and there was not a sound. Made to be Hunter became drowsy and he laid down to sleep. Early the next morning, Made to be Hunter woke to find the book was sitting nearby. He didn't say a word, and he just stared at Made to be Hunter. Remembering what Calling Tribes had told him, Made to be Hunter didn't flinch, and he just stared back. After a few minutes of this, the book was shook himself, as if waking up. You must be hungry. I have food brought for you, he said. You are a good host, my friend, Made to be Hunter said. I am fortunate that you found me after my canoe came ashore. Your food will be here soon, the bookers replied, and he left the house. He means you harm, Calling Tribes whispered from the recesses of the house. Calling Tribes, is that you? Made to be Hunter said. Come out where I can see you. I cannot, Calling Tribes said. I have eaten their food. I am no longer fit for your eyes. But take heed, they are coming to feed you again. I didn't eat their roast salmon yesterday, Made to be Hunter replied. They will tempt you again today, so strengthen your heart, Calling Tribes said. I must go. Wait. Then two young men entered carrying a large piece of hemlock bark with a piping hot sockeye salmon upon it. They laid it on the ground and stood beside the fire. Again, made to be hunter ate his provisions and pretended to eat their food. This was repeated for four days with roast salmon being given to him twice a day. Bookwas came regularly to sit silently and stare. Made to be hunter stared back resolutely and resisted the bookwas and only pretended to eat his food. On the fourth day, after the remains of the salmon had been taken away, Colin Tribes came to him again. They are getting suspicious. Tomorrow they will pretend to be your family who has come to rescue you, but don't trust them, she said. What shall I do? Made to be Hunter asked. Ask them for their paddles and then hold them over the fire, instructed Colin Tribes. Then sprinkle the visitors with urine and then be ready with your club. The next morning, Made to be Hunter saw his father and his four brothers arrive in a canoe. He greeted them and then asked to see their paddles. He carried them up to the big house and held them over the fire. They transformed into minks and martins and scurried about on the floor. Made to be Hunter killed them with his club. He took his chamber pot, returned to the canoe and splashed some urine on each of them. As soon as the urine touched them, they were transformed into land otters. Made to be Hunter killed each of them with his club. Then he stabbed the canoe with his hunting knife and it was transformed into a skate which swam away. In the evening, Colin Tribes came to him. You have overcome the ghosts, but they are not beaten, she said. They will try again, so you must be ready. On the following two days, canoes arrived again with family and friends, and each time when he tested them, Made to be Hunter discovered that the paddles were martins, the people were land artists, and the canoe was a sea lion one day and an orca the next. In the evening, Colin Tribes came to him again. Tomorrow your family will truly come to fetch you, but you should still be cautious and test them, she advised. This is the last time that I will come to you. In the morning, a canoe arrives with his father and brothers. Made to be Hunter was happy to see them, but he still asked for their paddles. He held them over the fire and they began to smoke because they were made of yellow cedar. He sprinkled urine from his chamber pot on them, but they didn't transform to land daughters. And when he stabbed the canoe, it proved to be red cedar. 
made to be Hunter was overjoyed to see his family, and his father and brothers were anxious to hear how he had survived in the land of the ghosts. He went to the big house and searched for calling tries, but she was not to be found. They loaded his remaining provisions and his harpoon, and they set off for their village. During his time among the ghosts, Made to be Hunter obtained supernatural power, and he became the best huntsman in the village. He hosted many potlatches, and he and his family became wealthy. To this day, his descendants display the bookwist mask and perform the dance of the wild man of the woods in their feasts. <laughs>